Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you guys the soft parts that I used in my Boba Fett costume and telling you guys exactly where you can get yours. I'm going to do a little bit of a review on all the pieces, tell you where you can find them, and show you how I changed them to fit into my costume. The Book of Boba Fett is nearly here so it feels really good to have this costume at least finished for now. I know that there's going to be some things that I'll have to change. But right now I'm really happy where the costume's at, so it might be a while before I make those changes. So let's get into it and take a look at some of the pieces. So starting out here, I've already got the pants on, but those I just got from Amazon. Link will be in the description. But the first two pieces that I want to review actually come from an Etsy shop called Grey Lone's Place. She came highly recommended on the Mandalorian build groups that I'm in on Facebook, and so I wanted to try out her product. The first piece is the two sashes that hang down near Boba Fett's waist. This is the cotton gauze variant. See, it's got a nice texture to it. It hangs very freely and comes with Velcro to attach it to your waist. This piece here was $65 and honestly, it was pretty worth it. I think you get a really good product for the price. It definitely would have taken me more than a few hours to source this material and make it all. So I'm very pleased with it. I love how it looks with the pants that I've got on and would definitely recommend it. Next up is the torso piece. And this one has a very extended neck just think of it as like the ultimate turtleneck shirt, but that's gonna be that scarf that Boba Fett wears above his collar. This was custom made, so you send in your measurements to her and she'll make this according to your size. This was a little bit tight on me, but I have also gained some weight over the holidays. I initially thought I put this thing on backwards because I saw the little tag on the scarf, but I realized you just have to fold it over and it'll be hidden. Like I said, this one's kind of tight, but this piece was $115, so a lot more expensive. I'm definitely going to keep it as part of my finished costume, but I feel like I could have gotten away with a cheaper option like the, uh, the first shirt that I had with the large scarf around it. So if you're trying to save some money, that might be a good place to do it. Okay, next up is the flak vest. I got this from Guavo Soft Goods, and it was $160. I got this because I need the little shoulder covers that partially obscure the shoulder plates, but this is a really nice piece for the cost you get. The material itself is really thick. It's got a zipper enclosure on the backside, which is nice, and it's also custom made, so you also send in your measurements, and they'll make it to fit you. I need a little help zipping up the back, but overall this piece looks great. So now let's go over what I had to change on them for the final product. So thankfully the only piece I had to change was the flak vest, and this was just to make it easier to attach the armor to it. So I knew I wanted to use magnets as a way to attach the chest plates. I felt like that would be the easiest and a kind of pretty cool way to attach it. So I bought a lot of these very strong magnets off of Amazon. Those will be linked in the description as well. When working with these, you actually need to wear eye protection because these magnets are so strong they can actually tear themselves apart and break and sometimes they fling off little broken magnet pieces and you don't want that in your eye. But we're gonna be gluing these magnets to the inside of the flak vest so that when the magnets collide, they don't break and shatter. What I've got to do though is align the magnets on either side of the flak vest so that they don't move while our E6000 is curing. So I'm gonna start with the little center diamond, glue the magnet on the inside of the flak vest and the opposite side magnet on the chest diamond. This is gonna help us align the other pieces, but I wanted to make sure that I got that center diamond aligned first. Okay, now we're gonna add the bar magnets to the chest plates. I aimed for about three a piece and tried to spread them out so that they wouldn't interact or accidentally join with each other. It's very important when working with magnets that you keep the polarity aligned and consistent, so that's always something to keep in mind. I just used some E6000, I really globbed it on there. These magnets are very strong and we want to keep them in place, so I made sure to even cover the back sides of the magnet with glue and just kind of totally encase it. We're going to wait 24 hours for this glue to cure so that when we put these chest plates on the front side, it doesn't uh, make a huge mess. Okay, you can kind of see in theory what the idea is here. We can snap the center diamond onto the chest torso and have that connection completely hidden. But now it's time to add the other chest plates and the other magnets to the inside of the torso. The most important thing is making sure that all the armor pieces are aligned and trying to get that consistent gap between all the plates so that one plate isn't overlapping the other plate or one plate is too far away from the others. So I'm putting magnets on the inside of the torso while looking at the outside. Then when I like how all the pieces are aligned, I'm just gonna flip it over trying to keep the plates exactly as they were, and this should give us a good indication of where we need to glue the inside magnets to. I have to do a little double checking because I felt them shift when I flipped it, but now it should be ready for glue. And again, we're just globbing on as much E6000 as we need. The magnets on the chest plate should keep the magnets from sliding, 
but the glue will want to drip a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. If I was better with a sewing machine, I probably would have liked to instead sew little pockets for all these barbed magnets. That way I would be able to wash it in a washing machine. Right now I'm not really sure what putting this flak vest with all these magnets glued to it would do to a washing machine, but don't really want to find out. But sewing in little pockets for all of the magnets could also have worked. The next thing that I needed to do to this flak vest was add the velcro for the shoulder plates. And so I just cut some velcro from the opposite side of the velcro that I already have underneath my shoulder plates. And we're just going to E6000 that onto the shoulders underneath that little covering so that we can really shove the shoulders up underneath there so that they're partially obscured. So those are the changes I made to the flak vest. Let's go ahead and try out that magnet system, see how well it works. So like I said, putting on this thing is a little bit tricky without someone to help you zip up the backside but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be okay. You can see the three little dots on the front underneath where the diamond goes. That was actually an earlier attempt at mine to directly glue magnets onto the outside of the flak vest. Number one, it didn't work. And number two, it unfortunately left little glue marks where I had tried to glue them in. So I'm gonna do my best to cover those up, but those dots shouldn't be on your flak vest if you decide to buy from this place. All part of the fun of prop making, lots of trial and error. But you can see how nicely these chest plates attach directly to my torso. My favorite thing about it is that you can't really tell how exactly they're connected. It's that seamless to the torso. It takes some minor adjustments to align all the chest plates properly. I think that's just because the way I oriented the magnets was all the same direction. And so the plate can actually join, but join kind of out of sync, if that makes sense. So you might try and vary the direction of the magnets so that there is only one way that those magnets will connect and have it separate those parts properly. So you might glue some magnets horizontally mixed with some vertically is what I'm saying. But those are the changes I made. So let's go ahead and put on all this armor and see how we look. Okay, putting it all on, I'd like to start with the lower body stuff while my torso is free and unencumbered. You wanna start with the knees before you put on those boots. I made that mistake a little bit ago, but after the knees are on, then I'll put on the boots and then the boot covers. Following it up, I'll start with the little girth belt and then the leather belt. Next, I'm gonna sling the jetpack over my shoulders since that part is pretty large and unwieldy. And I wouldn't wanna try and do it with all the other parts. Normally, I'd have some help putting all this on and to better orient all the pieces. So there are gonna be some pieces that look a little funky here. For instance, I also need some help putting the shoulders deep enough underneath their covers to look good. Then I'll put in the jetpack accessories, the rocket and the little thrusters on the side, along with the forearms. I like to put the forearms first and then the gloves so that I can just push the gloves underneath the forearms. I find that's easier than trying to push the gloves through the forearms. Saving the helmet for last because once I put that on, it becomes a lot harder to see. But there you go, guys. That is the Boba Fett armor as it sits right now. Like I said at the beginning, there's some changes that I want to make to it to make it accurate to the Book of Boba Fett version. But right now, I'm really happy with how it came out. And to be honest, I've already started a few more projects that I really want to get done as well. There's a whole bunch of cool videos and fun little skits that I want to do in this armor, maybe side by side with the Mando armor. So I'm excited for that. But right now I feel content to leave this as a job well done. Making costumes all the time can be tiring and stressful. So instead of obsessing over every small detail, I feel good with where it's at right now. This will be the last video in the tutorial series, but you can definitely expect to see this armor in the future. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial series and I hope we all get to enjoy Book of Boba Fett together.